Hello everyone and welcome back again. I could not welcome you more than this, but thank you so much for joining us. And here we are with Aleph Tech Talk series. We have Mr. Trul Salzman in the house. And the last topic uh, for today is Azure Lighthouse. So uh, Truls, could you please uh, give your insights on this? For example, um, setting it up right for maximum benefit. Uh, we would also be uh, highlighting or we would love it if you would uh, highlight the advantages of Azure Lighthouse, such as um, scalable management and enhanced customer engagement, and also discuss how to maximize its benefits. Yeah, sounds good. So uh, Azure Lighthouse, for those who are not uh, familiar with Azure Lighthouse, I will share my screen. Um, Azure Lighthouse is a extremely strong tool, uh, which I am very fan of. Um, for our uh, work, we use it for access management. Uh, so it's, it's resource management you can do, but there's a lot of different things. We will get to that and look at some samples later, uh, what you can do with it. But first and foremost, it's a really strong tool for, uh, from a security perspective, least privileged access. So uh, the old sort of like business to business uh, connection that a lot of um, service providers have uh, prioritized is going to be uh, guest users, something like that. And Azure Lighthouse forgoes this by allowing you to create um, sort of links. You can picture them as windows into the tenant of the, the managed um, customer. So from a management tenant, so a management Azure tenant, um, you can create a template and this template can refer to uh, groups. Uh, I can take uh, uh, to show you. Uh, it can refer to Azure AD groups uh, and then you can give, you can link that group together with the role uh, definition and you can give it access to a certain scope. So I like to explain it uh like this it gives a principle in the managing tenant and level of access to a scope in the managed tenant so this means that we can take as i said a group uh, or a service principle and give it a certain level of azure RBAC access to a resource group or a subscription in the customer's environment and the access will be static so once you have uh, onboarded it it's not something that you can easily um uh, get out of to put it like that but it's it's static so uh, you don't have to worry about someone using this for for if you design it right you don't have to worry about privilege escalation or something like that and you can also see in the uh, my service providers azure lighthouse view you can also see uh, what uh, templates you have entered into uh, you can see uh, who has access to what and so you can see everything that's going on and everything that's being done in Azure Lighthouse is also going to be logged to the customer's tenant. So they can also see all the activities you do as a service provider. They can just have uh, filters for your uh, management tenant's um, address. So it's, it's a very strong uh, tool. Now, how we set it up, um, Microsoft has uh, a lot of ways to use it. We can use do it from the marketplace. So we can create a marketplace offers uh, offer uh, where we can say how oh, we will manage your Azure VMs or we will manage your subscription as a service provider, or we can do it as an ARM template. So this is just a JSON file with all the definitions. And how you do it is that the customer will either uh, onboard a marketplace offer or they will uh, take the template you send them and, and onboard it to their tenant. And this will give the uh, defined access uh, on the defined scope to a, a user or a group or a service principal in the uh, MSP or CSP's uh, tenant. So that's that's very quickly how, how Lighthouse works. It is a very strong uh, tool, I will say. Um, some things to consider when, when you're setting up. Uh, so when you give access the access is constant this means that the group or the uh, user uh, that's given access will have access all the time 
unless you say that it's going to be uh, eligible access or, or using PIM. You can define PIM, so this is privileged identity management, which, which allows you to uh, enable roles for a limited time that you need them only. So you can set that up with, with Azure Lighthouse, but that's going to be in, uh, it's going to be a bit different depending on how you want to design it. I've created some designs uh, that you might want uh, to use or look at, but the general idea is that when a user logs on, uh, first, first thing, you should never assign Azure Lighthouse to a specific user. Uh, that's a bad idea. You can do it, but it's not a good idea. For management, you should assign it to groups and to service principles only. Um, the idea is that also that these groups that you assign the Azure Lighthouse to should be uh, what we call PIM groups, uh, PIM enabled groups. And this means that people are added as eligible. And so this means they don't have active access. They need to be eligible only. So this means that when they get to work, they have to activate their access into that group. Let's say here, this is engineering. Uh, and then once you activate that role, it will give you access to something like Microsoft Sentinel contributor in the customer's tenant. So uh, this is just going by Microsoft best practice, but it's uh, you should never have constant access to the customer's environment. You should have to take some sort of action. Uh, maybe you supply with extra uh, multi-factor authentication uh, to be given that access. This is a, a security for you as a service provider, but also it's a security for the customer because they will see that you have activated your role. And so they can see when someone is, is accessing uh, their tenant. So that's something to consider with Lighthouse. Um, I've written a little bit about this as an MSSP. So this is not uh, purely as an MSP, but as a security service provider. There's a lot of things that, that's the same, but some things you need to consider when using Azure Lighthouse is what access should you give? Because if you are using something like um, a guest user to give access, and the guest user has a certain level of access, and you just give the same amount of access from uh, using Azure Lighthouse, I would say that's a bit lazy. So a good thing about Azure Lighthouse is that it can give you the option to only assign very relevant roles. So here I've written about for Microsoft Sentinel, you need to do your due diligence as a service provider. You need to figure out what our service are we providing? Uh, what is it that we are doing? Uh, and then see what roles can I use to accomplish this using uh, the idea of least privilege. So that means you shouldn't assign contributor to all subscriptions or owner to all subscription because that works. And yeah, obviously it's gonna work. It's uh, almost uh, the most privileged role you can have, right? So uh, here, instead of uh, giving contributor, you can maybe give Sentinel reader to someone. You can give like a more niche role that uh, fulfills some part of what you're trying to accomplish. And you can build uh, a list of roles that together accomplishes what you're trying to do instead of just giving the one uh, very good uh, role, right? So I've mapped it out here in this article for Sentinel, right? So all the different things you might want to have. Um, and then uh, there's also from Microsoft, they have a MSSP playbook. They also map out a bunch of other roles, but it's all about what you are providing, what you're planning to provide. This is also one thing that's very important I will get back to. But you need to look at your service when you're using Azure, Light Azure Lighthouse. What are you providing? And then select the roles based on that. Um, yeah, so, so the point I was uh, talking about earlier is that if you are wanting to uh, your your service includes a certain set of things, but you're trying to expand. Maybe you will add a new product or something new, maybe an add-on to your service. You should design the Azure Lighthouse config with that in mind, if it's something that you're going to do in the next couple of months, so that uh, when, uh, because when an Azure Lighthouse is onboarded, um, and this is going to be, uh, the difference here is going to be if it's onboarded via an RM template, there is no way to change it for you as a service provider. 
So this is a security for the, the, the managed, so those who are buying services from you. But this means that once it's onboarded, you will have to create a new template uh, and onboard a new one in order to update the delegations. If you have a marketplace offer, you can update the marketplace offer and then the customer will be able to, on their side, accept the change. So that's a bit easier. Uh, but the marketplace offerings are very hard to create uh, in terms of like the Lighthouse uh, setup. Uh, and there's a limit on how many you can have uh, on board. I think it's 50 or something per offer. So that's uh, something to consider. But it's very important to know that you should also design uh, to be scalable, uh, but design it based on least privilege. The samples Fresh Lighthouse is a very good place to look. Um, they have their own uh, samples repository. Here is a, a lot of different things uh, you can do. So you can onboard customers using as a MSP uh, for different things like marketplace uh, subscription, you know. Uh, but then you can also do things like uh, from Azure policy. Um, you can do use it for Azure monitor. Uh, one thing that is very interesting, you can also use Azure policy to onboard Lighthouse. Uh, so you can have a policy that says if this subscription is not onboarded, then it will be uh, onboarded with this template. Uh, so that's some things to think about. Um, the samples are very good. Uh, they're very detailed. Uh, so you have simple templates that show you uh, just for subscription management, but they, they also show for something like Azure AD, Entry ID using PIM uh, and more uh, detailed ones. So here there is uh, a lot of very good templates. There's also a lot of good uh, community contributions uh, for, for Azure Lighthouse. So I think it's um, for those who are not yet using Azure Lighthouse, I think it's a very strong tool. Um, it allows you to simplify onboarding customers instead of having to have a guest user and you have to think about user management and lifecycle management and all that stuff. If you're managing resources that Azure only, then Azure Lighthouse will be uh, a lot better because it will mean that the user will not see your user accounts. They don't have to invite you. They don't have to think about, oh, uh, will they remove the guest accounts once someone quits? And they don't have to be worried about that because all the user management will be done on your side. Um, and they can delete the Lighthouse access once uh, your relationship ends. So this is, it simplifies a lot of things. Instead of having to invite users and do a lot of things, it's they only have to uh, enable or onboard a template uh, and then you're good to go. So it, it's a lot, I guess it's a lot more uh, uh, simple. It's a lot easier. Uh, and it also, it gives a lot more security if you can document uh, your, your Lighthouse templates well. So you can say, uh, these are the, the roles uh, we are giving. Uh, so you can say this is the roles we're giving to these people. Then the customer also has a very um, uh, good understanding of what they are uh, allowing and what they're giving access to. So it's a it's a very good a good thing for both parts, I think. So uh, yeah, that's the the uh, the quick rundown on 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 Azure Lighthouse and and uh, what's good about it. Wow, thank you so much, Rules. Uh, again, like I think the other topics, this was also covered uh, quite well. And that was it. These are the three topics we want to uh, we wanted to talk about as of now. But we would definitely love to have you again for many more topics. So I would like to tell our audience to stay tuned to many more videos coming. Anything uh, you would like to uh, add up at the end, uh, tools to sum up all these three things or something like that? Uh, I think uh, there is a lot of things to uh, look at when it comes to uh, 
tech technical stuff in general. Even if you're like me uh, in the cybersecurity world, there is so many tools, uh, so many things to keep a track of constantly. Uh, it's very hard. Uh, I think stick to uh, one thing, uh, learn about that thing is very important. I think if you want to focus on something right now, that's very important. I think automation and also the implementation of uh, using AI effectively in automation is going to be uh, for the next year very, very important. It's something that's uh, gonna gonna be be important for a lot of people. So I think that's if you're taking anything out from today, like what should I focus on? I think certainly uh, automation is going to be a very very important topic to keep a uh, keep an eye out on. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. Uh, thank you so much, Jules. It was absolutely lovely to have you and to have this conversation on all of the three topics. Uh, we would like to extend a warm thank you from the side of our audience and partners as well. And we would love to see you again soon. Like I said, this is your host, Uzma Sayed, signing off. Thank you so much.